An abduction of school children at government science school Kagara, Niger State, is coming on the heels of yet to be resolved Kankara abduction of 300 students, which took place at government science school Kankara, Katsuna State, Chibok girls in 2014, and abduction of about 100 school girls at government girls science and technical school Dapchi, Yobe State, in 2018. And concern that like the other incidents of school children abduction that took place in Chibok and Dabchi several years back, if no immediate action is taken to rescue Kagara school students, their fate may be sealed in the hands of terrorists. Can we rightly say that this government, I am sorry to say, that this government is incompetent in handling the security challenges in this country? Because this issue has been discussed here over and over, and there is no improvement. It is even getting worse. Are we supposed to amend the laws in this country to give every citizen freedom to carry arms? What else are we going to do? Are we going to amend the Nigerian Constitution to give more powers to the governors who are the security, chief security officers of their various states? Because our government at the center is showing incompetence in handling security challenges. Let each one of us here imagine that it is his son or his daughter that has been kidnapped. The United State is next to the FCT. If we believe we are comfortable in the FCT, we should begin to understand if they are in the State, they are as well in the FCT. And the forest, which these people use as their hideout, is like a kind of stretch of areas. There is a continuum of forest from the FCT into Niger State, through Shiroro local government, into Rafi local government, and into Mariga local government to Zamfara. These things are known. And I think it is time for our security agents to double their efforts so that our citizens can at least have some peace. I believe that uh, there is need for something new, a different initiative, on especially how to protect our schools. And let me be a little bit uh, clear about the incidents of abducting students from schools. Almost all the incidents of abducting students from schools happen in northern Nigeria. And we all know how much effort our leaders of yesterday, probably right from independence, have worked so hard to ensure that children go to school in northern part of Nigeria. And with incidents like this, we will be reversing all the gains that were made in convincing parents and what to take their children to school. So there is need for our security agencies and government to ensure that we come up with a strategy of ensuring security in schools. And uh, welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's our first major conversation this morning, of course, our views from the Senate House, where there yeah, are conversations about insecurity, kidnappings, banditry, insurgency, and where we are today. Uh, the, of course, uh, members of the House were seeking solutions and asking what next. Uh, we've invited this morning to speak with us, Mr. Bala Zaka, uh, to share his thoughts on the recent kidnapping um, and, uh, of course, uh, another conversation on safety of our students and safety of Nigerians. Good morning, uh, Mr. Zaka. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you and good morning, viewers. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's first of all get your reaction uh, to this. Um, we have, of course, uh, just concluded, we're still dealing with the Kankara schoolboys abduction and the effect and the trauma that that has caused those kids. And now there's another one um, in Niger State. Also remember that uh, on Tuesday morning, there were reports of 10 people killed and 24 others kidnapped also in Niger State. 
it doesn't seem to be ending. So let's get your reactions first uh, um, to the story. Well, when I heard about uh, the Kagara uh, abduction, uh, I felt very bad, like any other Nigerian. I, I, I felt sad, and uh, I began to also feel again that till now, I mean, we are the same country uh, uh, making investors not to come. I mean, the insecurity in our country is going to make even, even Nigerians who are within Nigeria not to be able to go to places and invest. It is very, very clear. And it is very clear that this insecurity has generally destroyed everything about our economic growth in particular. Because when you talk about insecurity, you're basically talking about absence of controls. That means you lack control mechanisms, whether they are preventive controls or detective controls or corrective or compensating mechani control mechanisms. Or even if the control mechanisms exist, but it shows probably that they, they are not effective. And uh, if control mechanisms are not effective, then uh, your country is thrown into a state of insecurity. And once there is insecurity, all other indices of growth will be put at bay. And that was why I felt very, very bad. No Nigerian, no lovers of Nigerian will be happy with what happened. Mm. Uh, Mr. Zaka, this is not the first time it's happening in Nigeria. We saw the first big one, the Chibok abductions. We saw Dapchi abductions. We saw the Kankara abductions, and now this one. And the... The general talk we're hearing, even from the Senate, is that we need to declare a state of emergency, we need to provide security in schools, but these same suggestions were given three abductions ago. Why does it seem that we have a reactionary government in this country? Well, uh, it, it's only those in government that can explain that for citizens and loyal citizens like me. I mean, after complying with my, with my civic responsibilities, I expect that I, I, I should enjoy my, my life. I, I expect that I should grow. I expect that I should live in a country where I will be proud. I will want to live in a country where all kinds of investments will come in and uh, my country should be respected among the committee of nations. That's what I expect. But when we cascade things down, I mean, into our own country, we have to be very, very factual. We don't need to lie to ourselves. This insecurity has been growing from an embryonic level. And to the best of my knowledge and experience, I think we took things for granted. You know, like you rightly said, uh, when you look at the northern parts of the country, I, I feel very bad when I hear people analyzing them and trying to lump them as one. No, they are different. In the northeastern flank of the country, what you have are terrorists. And terrorism is really hitting that flank of the country seriously. When you come to the northwestern part of the country, what you are experiencing is clearly, clearly banditry. And when you start cascading towards the central part, you know, and what, what you are going to see there is, is, is kidnapping. And between you and I, they are all different. The characters that are involved in all this are also completely different. So when I hear sometimes people trying to say it is the remnant or, or Boko Haram is moving towards, towards the, the northwest or towards north central, all I can tell you is that person is not probably very experienced or has not stayed or grown in the northern parts of the country. I grew up there. I started my primary and secondary school education in the northeastern part of the country. And I can tell you all those Boko Haram rascals are from the northeast. None of them from, is from the Northwest. We, anybody who speaks Hausa very well can place you from your accent. From somebody's accent, you will know that this person's accent is the accent of somebody from the middle part of the country, whether so it's Mr. Zaka, or not. Mr. Zaka, should this not even be more cause for worry? If, you know, you, you're, you're saying now that it's not just one terrorist group or one, you know, group of criminals. These are different groups coming up. This one, there's a group here kidnapping, there's another group here doing this. Should, it not, should this not make us even more worried to see that there's just so many strands of criminal elements all over the place causing havoc in the country? Uh, it, it, that was why I said I felt very sad. But you know, the common denominator they have is they are all, called, they are all criminals. 
because they are all criminals, because that's the common denominator. But I just want it to be known that the terrorists are there, the bandits are there, and the kidnappers are there. But the common denominator for them is criminals. It's just like when you have area boys, you have Yahoo guys, you have drug addicts, they are all bad guys. But I can tell you, a Yahoo guy is not necessarily an area boy. A drug addict is not necessarily an area boy. All right. And somebody can be an area boy, but he's not a Yahoo. But the common denominator is they are Indeed. all bad the, guys. The, so in the context the, of Mr. Nigeria, Zaka. they are all criminals. Yes, and um, unfortunately, it seems like we've um, created an environment where these different types of criminals um, can thrive. Uh, we've had, we currently live in an environment where, you know, we could move to another part of the country now and have a totally different approach to criminality. Um, and, of course, you know, Correct. give them a different name entirely. What, for me, is lacking is, you know, what seems to be lacking is, you know, an answer to these questions. But let me ask about kidnapping itself. It seems to have gotten to um, um, heights that we have, could never have imagined. It seems to be the new thriving business for these criminals. Um, so let's talk about that. Why do you think kidnapping is on the rise? Um, and what do you think might be going on, you know, that has led um, these criminals to continue, you know, to kidnap Nigerians for ransom? Well, uh, like you rightly said, uh, the three are, are all criminality, right? But when you talk about kidnapping, Kidnapping is something economic, purely economic. Boko Haram and terrorists, that has to do with, with, with ideology. Because for the, for the terrorists, what they want to do is they want to render the country lawless. They want to render the leaders irrelevant, and they will collapse everything about the country because they have an ideology to pass through. And for terrorists, Regardless, whether it's narco-terrorism or religious terrorism or sectarian or political terrorism, they have an ideology they want to pass into somebody's head. But for the kidnappers, everything is economic. But it is not economic because they are suffering. It is not economic because they want to live a better life. It's just that they notice that there is a way they can extort money from... from uh, gullible Nigerians, and the control mechanisms cannot catch up with them. So if we were to have the intelligence, all we need to do is to separate them. Because when you separate them and you dissect them and analyze them, that is how you, that is when you can handle them. Is it, isn't that going to... All, yeah, I was going to, isn't that going to be harder to deal with? Because when we were dealing with just Boko Haram, we saw the struggles that we went through. So if we now have to divide our, you know, our attention to kidnappers, to banditry, to insurgency, um, to the headers, you know, crisis, how do we, with the security network that we have, face all these things individually? So the answer is also very simple. It's just like when you're talking about medical sciences. When you are all called medical science scientists, I mean, you, you can all give palliative treatments. You understand but when when the chips are down you have to put the experts where they belong the neurosurgeon must go to where he needs to to, to, to provide service the oncologist needs to do that the pediatrician needs to do that like i said when you talk about the terrorists that one has to do with ideology so if you're analyzing your intelligence all of them yes are in one basket called criminals but then who are those who will deal with those that have ideology, rascality. That's how you attack. Then for those who are kidnapping for ransom, those kind of people, you need to get experts in that. So it's, and when you talk about experts, they are also the same. But when the chips are down, you have to be separated into a specialty. Like now, everybody will say we have Nigerian army. But I can tell you in the Nigerian army, you have some people who are just purely into intelligence. You have some who are infantry soldiers. You have some who are just in charge of logistics. So in situations like this, you must dissect. Because if you don't dissect, then you will not put the right experts, whether they are military or paramilitary, right. you won't put the right expert to take care of the right problems and nip these rascals in the board. All right.
Mr. Zaka, let's address a comment by the Minister of Defense. He came out to say that Nigerians should not be cowards, that we should stand our ground and defend ourselves. Uh, we're, we're, I don't know what you think. I think, I think there's, a, there's a clip. We have a clip for that. So we're going to play that clip um, for you and then we'll come back, you know, right after that. So, so just uh, hold on. Is it the responsibility of the military alone? It's the responsibility of everybody to keep alert and find safety when necessary. But we shouldn't be cowards. At times, the banditry will come only come with about three rounds of ammunition when they fire shot, everybody runs. In our younger days, we stand to fight any aggression coming to us. I don't know why people are running away from my mano, 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 thing like that. They should stand and let this uh let these people know that even the villagers, they have the competence and capability to defend themselves. But our own duty is to ensure no Nigerian is hurt and we are capable of pretend, uh, protecting the integrity of this nation. And we will continue to do it even though we are so straight. Mr. Zaka, that was the Minister of Defense there speaking. I really don't understand how something the nigerian military with all the training all the you know infrastructure all the equipment that they have have failed to protect us i don't know how villagers who basically you know farmlands rare cattle trade business i don't understand how you know just how the minister of defense meant when he said we need to stand our ground protect ourselves and show confidence but maybe you might want to shed more light on on how we can defend ourselves uh, you know as the minister has said yeah, I, I, I think in that aspect, I, I totally agree with the minister. What he did was he was, let me say, he was proverbial, really, when he was talking about that. But that, that statement he was making is the product of intelligence. And that aspect of the intelligence probably was something after they dissect the thinking of the ordinary Nigerian and the attitude of the, the, the typical criminal whether a kidnapper or a terrorist or a bandit, probably they have come out to discover that most of these kidnappers or bandits don't really have so much ammunition. But the general th thinking of a Nigerian is once a criminal say, hands up, or gather here, or shoot a bullet, you think that criminal is so seriously equipped. So that thing he is, that statement is a product of probably intelligence. But still, at the end of the day, we, we ordinary Nigerians don't carry arms. I think another thing he is trying to make us understand is if we can do something about the way we, 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 we hold ourselves and we share information, and this is a practical example. Assuming criminals, maybe two or three, I mean, uh, kidnappers storm a community, or even if they are 100, yes, that time they are trying to gather all of us. The one or two that will be bold enough to place phone calls to security agents should do that. The one or two that will be able to have the boldness to go and block the road that these criminals will want to pass, whether by road or motorcycle, should do that. I think that was what he meant. And okay, Mr. Zaka, you can get from the product of intelligence analysis. Mr. Zaka, two things oh. I wanted to, to bring to your attention. The first one is there's been several reports in northern Nigeria about how there's an attack going on, people call security agencies and they never show up. I spoke to you know, one of the spokespersons in Kaduna State about this and he mentioned that they have poor road infrastructure and that because of the poor roads, before they get there, you know, the attack you know, is over. So that's number one. You know, I want you to really explain to me how that can really happen, how they can call people in a situation where security agencies fail to show up. And secondly, as I mentioned earlier, villagers lack the training. For example, I have no military training. So if a bandit were to attack anywhere, how am I supposed to defend myself? And is that not an interpretation from the Minister of Defense saying, Nigerians, you are on your own. We can't protect you, so you have to protect yourself. Don't you see it that way? Well, it, you can see it from both angles. Because first of all, honestly, the military is supposed to, to protect everybody. Or the, the security agencies are supposed to protect everybody. But on the side, that was why we have always called him for military and civil engagement. There is a need for that level of interaction. But one thing that is clear when we talk about the military, it's not only the military that is 
suffering or the security agencies that are suffering from lack of equipment and infrastructures is the entire country is the health sector is suffering the educational sector even the the, the journalist sector is the media sector is is all suffering oh. one thing that i want to really advise is this as long as these criminals are still within a geographical entity called nigeria even after they succeed in this abduction there should be a mechanism of trying to cycle that radius all where right, that um, thing took place, and let's converge in the center and kill or destroy those rascals. Bala, Bala Zaka, let, let's, um, you know, in the interest of time, um, I want to, you know, ask um, something about, uh, still about kidnapping. But before that, just to quickly note that I don't think Nigerians are interested in being the ones to be recipients of those three or four bullets that the, you know, bandits may have, you know, since you've said that they might have come with very little ammunition. But I don't think any Nigerian wants to take any of those bullets um, you know, and be the hero um, when it is still left in security, security agencies to protect Nigerians. And also, remember that um, over time, the Nigerian security agencies and government has continued to ask that um, uh, weapons be submitted, illegal weapons and the likes, and, and Nigerians can barely protect themselves without weapons. But let me also go to um, somewhere else. You mentioned kidnapping is a financial, um, um, is financial terrorism somehow, some way. Um, we very likely are going to try and negotiate to get these boys back. Same thing we do, did with Kankara. Same thing we did with Dapchi. Is the continuous negotiation and the continuous maybe likelihood of paying ransom not feeding and playing into the same game of these criminals? If they're doing these things to raise funds, is our approach by consulting maybe traditional rulers, maybe the Meti Allah, whoever it is that will negotiate, isn't that, you know, playing back into their game and, you know, basically meaning that they would never stop kidnapping? Uh, you are 100% correct. You cannot help your, your citizens by arming the criminal. You cannot help the, your, your citizens by, 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 by giving money to the criminal. I don't like mentioning names, really, but on this, I stand 100% with El Rufai, Governor El Rufai, when he said, we must never, we must never capitulate, we must never negotiate with criminals. Treat them as criminals. We should do that. And to be honest with you, like I told you, especially in the northern part of the country, from our respective accents, you can place all of us, even if you can speak the Hausa accent of the other person, many of those rascals, especially those bandits and uh, kidnappers, are not Nigerians. I can prove that anywhere. You may have one or two saboteurs who, and betrayers who give information, but when we stand and we express ourselves, you will know that they are not. And by the time you start tracing them even to where they come from. You discover that they All don't right. have families in Nigeria. You can't trace them to anywhere. All right, so Mr. Zaka. No ransom. Mr. We Zaka, we're really running out of time. Kill all of them. Apologies for the interruption. We're really running out of time. But I wanted to quickly ask you about the end game, really, and the long-term effect of this. Because with this consistent abduction of Nigerian students, parents are living in fear. I mean, yesterday, lots of students have packed their things from the school heading back home and god knows when they will be they'll feel safe enough to return to school so let's talk a bit about how this you know constant cycle of abduction of school children it would be affecting education in northern nigeria in a place where lots of kids are out of school and the government is trying to get more people to get enrolled in school well that was i would go back again to the minister of defense and that was that was why i said his talk his speech was proverbial Honestly, you don't run away from a monster. You do everything you can to face the monster. So for, for the northern part of the country, let's be frank, the northern part of the country is already, or even before now, backward in education. The only thing is to, we can do is to confront it frontally. We must con confront the monster, like uh, Governor El Rufai said, face the monster. We may incur some casualties, but right. at the end of the day, we will prevail. Balazaka, uh, thank you so much.
for your thoughts this morning. We hope that, of course, these boys will be brought back to their parents and we can continue to do our best to ensure that these kidnappings come to an end entirely. Thanks for your thoughts this morning. Thank you and have a great day. I, I right. pray so too. Thank you. All right, absolutely. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving uh, to the southwest. And of course, uh, we're talking defections uh, this morning here on The Breakfast.